<laughs> we are starting the vlog on a very wet day today. Welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope that you like this week's vlog. Wow. That's just like you have a roller boy. This guy here, his name's Spot. He's an African spotted owl. Now he's now I'll tell you what, he's about 19 years old and he's had a bit of a summer rest. And the reason he's actually had a summer rest is because of the coronavirus. The Falcon Centre's had to shut to the public or close to the public. But we're gearing up a little bit hopeful now that in July we might be able to open up again and start having some of our amazing experience day guests come and fly these birds with us. Now, if we took him out with our guests, this is what he would do. He'd sit in a tree and do nothing. Because he's had his lunch today, he's not in the slightest bit hungry, and birds of prey 80%, 90% of the time, they're flying because they're hunting and they're looking for food. So when we work with them, people often think, do you starve them to get them to fly? How ridiculous. They need to be super athletes. Our birds are fed a top quality diet and plenty of food. We weigh them most days. And we look at their body language and we look at their weight and we keep a graph of the weight. And we can work out relatively well whether they're ready to fly because they're hungry enough to go hunting for their food, even though we're presenting it, or whether, do you know what, there's too much food in their system and their tummy's telling their brain, nah, don't bother doing anything, conserve your energy, you're a top predator, don't fly around for fun. So that's how, that's the essence of how we work with these guys. We fly them when they're ready for their lunch or their dinner. When they've had their food, they'll chill out like this, in their aviaries, they might sunbathe, they might have a bath. Some of them, enjoy sitting in the rain. But soon, this guy here, our wonderful African spotted owl, he'll be back up in the air and hopefully worrying and entertaining and above all else, educating some of our amazing guests about the world of nature and the world of birds of prey. At Icarus Falcon, we did a bit of maintenance work looking after some of the animals, well, some of the birds. And a lot of you guys know, I like my wildlife. I like my invertebrates, I like my reptiles. It's not just birds of prey for me. I kind of love all of nature, but these things, they're kind of cracking me up. This plant, I've had this plant for years in my garden, never flowered. Every year the frost kills it, but it loves it here. It's grown so well. This year it's finally flowered. Look at it. I love it. It's like a giant triffid. It's just crazy. It's got so many more flower buds come in. I've had it that long. I've actually forgot what it's called. So if you're a keen gardener and you like your more unusual plants, comment below, what is this amazing flower? It's crazy, but I love it. Anyway, can we look at some caterpillars? Come on. Right, this plant here is a species of mullein. Now, who would eat mullein? but the mullein moth caterpillar. Now, mullein moths aren't rare or anything, but this is one of their main food plants. Have a look, these are only small, I only found them today. And these amazingly pretty caterpillars, which you'll easily find yourself, certainly here in England, they're gonna get oh, four times as big. Quite juicy, chunky things. I just thought I'd show you these, because I think mullein moth caterpillars are really pretty. Have a little close up of that one. Look at that. What a pretty thing. Now they tend to feed quite prominently, easily seen, and I would imagine those bright colours are telling birds and things they must taste pretty foul, or they'd all vanish because they're not hiding or camouflaged like a lot of caterpillars are. I like them anyway. In great wildlife present fashion, I'm actually standing, kneeling here in the pouring rain just for this. Have a look at this, guys. You know, this is going to be a woodland wildlife pond and it's going to have two benefits to us. Benefit number one, wildlife. 
There's actually two species of newts that we find here quite regularly if we're moving rocks or log piles, and that is the smooth newt or common newt and the great crested newt. Now the nearest breeding pond for those guys, and we have, by the way, toads as well, the nearest breeding pond is quite a hike away. So we're hoping to attract some of those newts in here. Another wildlife, the whole area here is full of badgers and hedgehogs, believe it or not. The badgers haven't eaten them all, and foxes, shrews, wood mice. We've found all kinds of things here. It'll benefit all of those animals. I've spent quite a lot of my spare time digging this out by hand. It's incredibly rocky ground and it's took quite a bit of backache and sweat in that hot weather to do it. It's not huge, but it will serve the purpose. A bit of a lie. One of those lies was actually my dad dug this out for me and he's well into his 70s. <laughs> I've been very busy. I've been very busy. The second benefit of this pond is our photography days that we run here at Icarus Falkery in conjunction with wildlife photographer Bob Brinsearch. Check out his website. We're going to use this as a slight setting for some of that bird photography. Hopefully, we're going to make it into a little reflection pool here in the woods and see if we can train a tawny owl to land right on the edge. See what kind of images those guys can get. It's just a hole in the ground. Watch this space as it metamorphoses and changes into a naturalistic woodland pond. Just thought we'd show you guys one of my favourite species of snake. I'd love these guys for so long. And this is our male. We've got a pair here. And he's been very busy the last few months really, sort of mating with his girlfriend. Now, we've reared these two years running. Last year, they didn't lay any eggs for me, despite looking like they absolutely would. The female is huge and she is a puppy dog. The male has always been a lively thing and it's a false water cobra. Gets its name because it can flatten its neck, hood up just like the cobras from Africa and India and so on. He's not going to do it now, he normally does, so let's see. No, he's not. Very strong, very strong colubrid snakes. Not a bad size for a male. This guy, he'll grow bigger. Wait until you see his girlfriend. Different league altogether. In this species, the females grow noticeably bigger than the males. Anyway, this is just a sneak preview of a fantastic species of snake that we love here. Because soon, not yet, we're working on it, we're going to produce you guys a fantastic false water cobra video. How to keep them and a lot more. What a stunning species of snake. Incredibly strong and incredibly beautiful, big smooth scales. In fact, one of its other names is the Brazilian smooth snake. No keels on its scales at all. Big scales, really smooth. Keep following. Soon, not yet, we'll bring you that video. Enjoy. Why have we got stuff all over you? It's confetti. What is it? Oh. You've been helping her shed her skin, have you? Let's have a look at her. Flakes off. Gorgeous. Blue tongue skink. If you want a pet lizard, honestly, these guys tick all the boxes. They'll make eye contact with you, they'll recognise you. They look absolutely beautiful. And a little bit of research, these guys will live for 30 years and be a fantastic pet. Who's hooping up in this animal room? <laughs> Look. Whoa. <laughs> Hang on. I don't get that name, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm colour blind, but there you go.
Bye, Bindi. For those of you that watched our recent snake unboxing video, just to let you know, this young black-headed python, excuse the state of my hands, this young black-headed python, she's doing absolutely brilliantly. Eating like a trooper and gradually growing. Let's catch up with the milk snakes next. Okay, look at this. These are our hatchling Pueblo milk snakes. You can see a shedded skin there. So just a few days in from hatching, they're shedding or starting to slough their first skins. And so now it's going to be time to split them up and start feeding these guys. You can see different ones here ready to shed. Some are cloudier and some like this one here have just shed their skin. Absolutely gorgeous. You can really see the one here that shed its skin compared to the ones that are just getting ready. The brighter, much crisper colours. So time for this guy tomorrow to have his first feed. Brilliant. So talking to a friend of ours today who's popped in, most of you know who he is. He's got one of his young falcons that he's actually hand rearing and growing on. It's having its dinner. If you're a vegetarian, do apologise, but it doesn't eat anything but meat. What kind of species is this, Carl? It's a jur falcon, this one. Male jur falcon. So it's a pure other, jur falcon. Pure jur, otherwise known to us as a jerkin. So the male's called a jerkin. The male's called a jerkin. What's the female called then? Just falcon. A jur. Okay, just a jur. Yeah, so it's the same as other falcons. Different, different names. Tearsil for the male, falcon for female. So what I would say this bird should be white because it's a snow falcon, a jerk falcon. So why is it not white? Do they come in different colours? Four different phases of jerk falcon. White, silver, grey, black. Wow. And, and obviously the darker they are, the more expensive they get. Really? So actually the white ones nowadays are kind of almost the old, the old fashionable thing and the some new fashionable uh, thing is something else. It depends. Some people prefer white falcons, some people prefer darker ones. And the person I breed for prefers darker birds. So. Well, if the value was irrelevant and you were going to fly one for yourself, would you have a preference in colour and what would it be? Silver. A silver one. Very nice. But this one, when it's mature, will it be very, very dark like it is now kind of thing on its back? It should be grey. Quite a nice dark grey. Dark grey. The trouble with darker birds is these birds are very susceptible to getting asper aspergillosis, okay. a fungal disease. Okay, and that gets in their lungs and goes to their brains, doesn't so it? So they eventually? have to be kept really clean, the environment has to be kept clean, away from stress. So they're very susceptible. So he's going to be on a, on a course of Sporanox as soon as he's eight weeks old, so just as a prevention. So a prophylactic, a preventative measure. Yeah. Now I was told Especially by being so dark. some breeders before that breed these guys, and I'm sure it's true, you can probably tell me they have a very weak immune system because they're an almost arctic kind of bird they come from somewhere that's mostly cold they don't have as many germs to contend with in their natural environment is that be true do you think exactly exactly the problem yeah that's why um, we have to be really really careful especially the last few months since i've had him he's been pretty much kept in the shade or on a fan yeah, so the slightest stress cool. to his system yeah. even a little bit of overheating it could it could kind of make him success susceptible to this yeah. illness quite, which is fungus easily. And it's, if, if, if you find it early, it can be treated, but if, it, if um, it's not picked up in time, then they're just going to die. Wow. So they are very, very, um, very susceptible to this aspergillosis. It, it is worrying, not being, it's been, it is worrying, especially with the heat we've been having and the summers we've been having, but um, it is controllable. That's controllable. And there are signs you can, uh, again, this sporanox is going to be um, a preventative measure. So and once he's had, he's had a pre preventative course of treatment, he's going to be very, I mean, look at it, it's nearly grown up now. How old is it at the moment? Six weeks now. So six weeks. So six let's say weeks. by 10 weeks, it's going to be absolutely fully gone. Will, unless it gets ill now, that will just be a preventative course. You won't be repeating that every six to 10 weeks or something. It's just a one-off treatment unless it ever does get ill. No, it'll be over a course for a few weeks. Yeah, course, fair enough, just to help it out. Yeah. And I'll always have some on standby because the first thing you'll look for in a bird like this, if it goes off his food, or it's panting a lot. Okay, cool. Yeah, they are the first signs. A lot of people don't realise. I had someone ask me recently about snakes actually, like, oh, do they get ill very often? And I think with birds of prey snakes, and I would say any really exotic animal, 
the best way to keep them healthy is actually to keep them healthy, isn't it? To look after them really well, give them a really, a really good environment, yeah. be on top of your hygiene, because yeah. with a snake or that expensive falcon, when you think that looks ill, it is actually very ill, isn't it? Yeah. And prevention with, is better with, than cure, isn't it, with these guys? And with, with falcons and any, well, anything, anything to keep really, any live that's thing, any live family. Yeah. Stress-free environment, nice and clean environment, and nice, healthy, fresh food every day. Good quality food. Yeah. So Again, this guy, you... Actually, they do eat rat at the moment, but you might not eat rat as he gets older. I do like to feed the birds lots of rats as they're youngsters. Yeah. With peregrines, they stop eating it because the parents don't feed don't it. Don't like it so much. But to, as a good start, Nice. Good healthy no, diet. Quail. And doesn't the good thing about rat, one good thing about rat, it doesn't spread avian diseases, does it? No. Bird to bird, which is one one thing, isn't it? But let's have a little zoom in. So this bird is six weeks old. Six weeks old. It's probably fully grown weight wise, nearly. I put think? him on the scales yesterday and he weighed three pounds three and three quarters. Wow. Which is quite big. Doesn't it show how dense that bird is? Because it doesn't look no. that big, does it? That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, some label falcons. Although they look solid, relatively like small compared to hawks, they are, the weight is really, really Crikey, that's unbelievable. quite bulky. Three, for six weeks old, we're in three, three pound three ounces, quite, um, wow. quite a good size. And you've hand reared this guy, and this bird here, he's actually going to be staying with you for his lifetime, isn't he? Yep. Yep, he's going to be one he of my stud birds. So top quality for top quality breeding lines. Yep. There might be some people watching this that have seen a hoo-ha recently about uh, a falconer managing to get a license to take a peregrine from the wild. Well, that's a political thing. For sure, if you breed animals in captivity and you keep a good bloodline, you can breed over generation and generation, can't you? Really top quality birds without any wild stock. Uh, wild stock is always great for any, any, any kind of animal breeding because you're getting pure bloodlines. But I think with you guys breeding this quality, you're careful to breed. You know, you're not inbreeding, you're breeding top quality animals, aren't you? And keeping a really eye on the genetics to breed for top quality. That's the, um, that's, I'm not sure where I stand with that uh, captive uh, wild take nowadays because there's so many, so many good falconers, as we know, breeding real nice birds. But again, on the other hand, there's a lot of people who will try and get away with breeding rubbish Different, and, and adding, yeah. adding stuff to them and trying to. I think in falconry. As a real, as a, as a, as a full, imp, a full uh, peregrine. Yeah. I think it's in falconry, we've, been, we've um, been played, don't we? With, with working dogs. Yeah. Only the very top quality working dogs are bred from because everyone wants the best. With Fulkery, we've been plagued over the years with people breeding rubbish thinking they're going to make a quick buck, haven't yeah. we? Whereas guys like yourselves, you're absolutely red hot on quality and bloodlines and making sure these guys are fit, healthy, well bred birds, which is what any animal breeder should do, shouldn't they? Breed from, breed, breed from the best, really. Yeah, well, I've, got, um, I've got a real good line and, and I've got real good quality stock and I'll only breed. From my stock, yeah, so and occasionally you know, I'll right. bring one or two in from somebody I know who's a reptile breeder and got real nice quality lines. Sort of to improve or keep the genes strong, kind of thing. I love the way they turn their head upside down. These imprints. Has it got a name? I called him Max. Max. After many deliberations and all <laughs> sorts of different things, <laughs> I've had to settle for Max. Max. But I'm going to call him Maximus. Maximus. Wow. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna say gorgeous, we'll gorgeous, real deep blue eyes at the moment. If you can get I was gonna say we'll, really we'll pop blue. back and see him when he's all fully feathered. Like it's like I'm talking far in the future, but we're talking a couple of weeks, really, aren't we? Yeah. And he'll be completely different. What a stunning bird! So a treat for everyone. A pure jerful kind of jerk in the mail. And that's a which forms that. So what do you call that? I call it a dark form, but what's it called? Black. Yeah, but it's grey. Grey, a grey yeah, jerk. Gray. So grey jerk. Really, is jet black. Okay. So he's grey. Oh, thanks for that interview, Cal. That's amazing. What a, what a treat. He's such a pure and, and the most highly sought after of all the falcons. And probably in the olden days, many birds of prey, the Jer falcon was the biggest falcon and still is. And, and the thing of kings and absolute royalty, really, wasn't it? Uh, once Absolutely. upon a time. Yeah. And he, he's still he's going to be um, with me on a block, or at least I might even give him a little fly around. Because he can yeah. be flown. Yeah, yeah. And now I've got the proper GPS equipment. I'm quite happy to fly this um, for a little while because he won't he won't be able to donate semen for at least which was part which would be his job years. wasn't it talking a bit of bird yeah, porn so but that's going to be his job isn't it? for a few years yeah no. so, so he could be flying we've got latest gps to track him in case he does get a little bit yeah. lost 
But really, what a, what a thing. That's a bird that would have only been owned by the top royalty in the world, and you've got the privilege that you're good enough to actually breed these birds. That's amazing, isn't it, really? Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much. It's been really rude and looking the wrong way, so we'll end it there. Yeah, See you later, Max. Um, uh, going on, he's looking at my tortoises. <laughs> From us too, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>